Hi, beautiful souls. It's Serena. Welcome to my channel and carrying on with the top five theme. Today, we're going to have a look at Oracle decks. And I've decided I've got quite a few categories here on my table. Plant decks, animal decks, um, self-study decks, kind of overall decks, decks that have um, simpler illustrations. And so I'm going to really kind of pick up a variety of decks for you here. And we're going to start today with the Druid uh, Plant Oracle. I have, and if you've seen my channel, quite a collection of Plant Oracle decks. And I will link the video in the description box below for the last video I did where I showed a bunch of my plant decks and flower decks. Um, why is this one, in my estimation, the best? Well, it has to do with the guidebook, and it's really important that as you um, learn to explore the plants, you understand that depending on the land, where the plant comes from, whether we're looking historically at the use of a plant or a current, um, whether they're currently available or not, this is such a pretty, pretty flower, and I encountered flax um, when I was at a retreat recently, and it just reminded me how working with plant oracles can really kind of awaken your awareness of what is around and what's available um, for use. Because um, this is not something I normally would have had my eye open for. And when I'm out for my walks, I, I am definitely um, looking for a new species, you know, every, every season. So what I was saying is that this deck doesn't have any keywords, but it does have really well done illustrations of the leaves, the, the flowers, the stamens, the um, sometimes the different evolutions of the plant, as well as plants that grow near it in this particular part of the world. So you need to also keep that in mind because every plant in every plant oracle card is not going to be available where you live. So the beauty of this deck is in the thoroughness and oh I do you know what I just saw this I'm looking at this upside down and you can see the green man here that is just amazing um, I don't think I've ever noticed that on this card the other sorry I didn't finish my sentence and I may come back to that I lost track when I just noticed that the other thing too is that there's a few cards here where several of the plants are joined and this, this particular card joins three plants which are called the Restorers and you have an opportunity to bring the medicine of all three of those plants into a reading. But I think this is more than just about foraging and studying plants. It's really about connecting to the energy of something that is around us all the time. And whether we make tinctures, whether we um, add these plants to our salads or we cook with them or, you know, we just we cut them and enjoy their beauty, they their energy is available and um it is, it's meant to be shared, and how you go about doing that is entirely up to you. Um, you might not feel like cutting and just being in the forest and, and being with the different kinds of ferns. Um, but there's just so much opportunity to bring this medicine in. And when you add a plant oracle to a tarot reading, there is... Uh, definitely this beautiful alchemy that happens. And the reason, again, that I recommend this book has to do with the guidebook. So let's have a look at the guidebook and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the other thing, actually, let's look at the veins. That's a really cool card. Mm. The other thing I was going to say was that it's really important to start a list if you're collecting plant decks to start cross-referencing the names because uh, many of the decks have the Latin name, which is great because that makes it easier to know if you're talking about the same plant. But also some of the names are common to certain areas and a different area will have a different name. So starting a list like that is really helpful. And I have done that with the decks that I have. And if you're interested, I'm happy to share that. Um, I could send you an email if you want to contact me. Um, the other thing about this um, card, which is really obvious, this is a full moon and we have that kind of 
full moon energy. So not even using this as a plant oracle, but just using that full moon energy, you know, you can bring that in if you're using this deck in combination with, um, with the tarot, whether it be the druid craft or another deck um, entirely, because this deck works beautifully with many, many tarot decks. So this card is called the Banes. It features three deadly plants. Um, but if they are brewed or they are used um, in a certain way, they can also uh, share gifts. And I think that is the, the biggest message here for me with this card. And we need to remember that, especially in the more challenging cards of the tarot and oracle decks, is that there is always a gift if we're willing to uh, explore and find it. And what happens in the light of the full moon is that the painful, you know, the, the, the things that we don't want to look at, the things we don't want to experience are revealed. That's because they're hard. And so sometimes it takes work to move through, you know, that which we have to move through. So this beautiful plant that we see here is Wolfsbane, also known as monkshood. And then we have um, hemlock and henbane. The upright meaning of this card in the book says life can sometimes almost seem unbearable. If you have chosen this card, it may mean that you are surrounded by pressures and difficulties, but life is fundamentally mysterious and out of the blue, something can happen that acts as a catalyst for change. We are so used to the high drama and big stories of movies and television that we forget the immense power of the smallest things. Just one remark of a friend or a stranger, one line in a book or a dawning realization of your own can trigger a new direction in your life or turning a point in your affairs. Such a gift may come to you from a completely unexpected direction and those unexpected directions are often revealed when things are most most challenging. So you get this beautiful oracle message without even having to deal with the medicine of the plant. If that's where you don't want to go, they the guidebook also offers reversed meanings, and then it offers, um, you know, apothecary, ointment, salves, tinctures, and all kinds of historical information, how the plants are used. It doesn't give you recipes per se, but it does give you kind of historical information. And henbane is one of the oldest recorded poisonous plants with a magical reputation. It was used by the ancient Egyptians and is related to mandrake and deadly nightshade. Despite its deadly potential, henbane was used in folk medicine in Britain and Europe for its pain relieving and sleep inducing properties. In Sussex in the 17th century, a teething necklace for babies was made out of henbane or pine and vervain roots soaked in red wine and henbane seeds were smoked to alleviate the symptoms of neuralgia, toothache and rheumatism. So if you're interested in the kind, this kind of um, information, this guidebook is just full of a place you know, to start, um, to start with the plants. So yeah, and I don't recommend starting with the deadly plants, but, uh, and the artwork by Will Worthington is, is just really lovely. So yeah, so this is definitely one of my favorite plant oracles. As you're aware, I also have quite a collection of animal oracle decks, and it was really difficult for me to choose my favorite. In the last video I did sharing many of my animal oracle decks, I chose the Messenger Cards by Sandra Coons as my favorite animal oracle deck, and it still is one of my favorites. It's a very, it's a beautiful deck. It's a square deck produced by um, a Canadian artist, and I believe it's still available. Sandra has a lovely newsletter that she shares every month as well, too. And I want to go back. Um, I, I know I did a recent video on this deck, the um, Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Cards. However, I think this is an underutilized animal deck on many, many levels. And in the guidebook, you definitely do not get a lot of information about the, um, the medicine of each of the 
of the animals. So if you have other animal oracle decks, if you have um, a reference book about animal medicine, then you know that can work in conjunction with the guidebook, the Wild Unknown Animal, um, animal Guidebook. But the reason that I think this deck needs more attention is that it has so many layers. And like I was saying with the plant oracle that I just showed you, it also has many layers. Like you don't have to go to the medicine of the plant. You can look at the scene in the background where we had the full moon on the Baines card, things like that. And in this deck, we have something very, very similar. So we have this really kind of... Um, focused use of color. So on the crow card, we have this ball of energy at the foot of the crow. And if you sit in contemplation with these cards, the the area of light and focus of color is really, really important. Here we have um, the symbol for fire. We have the fire at the tip of the scorpion's tail. And we have this animal that is... Um, very, it's it's feared, it's dangerous. You can get um, tremendously ill if you're stung by a scorpion and, you, scorpion and you don't have the resources to deal with that kind of wound. But the scorpions also represent many, many other things. And there is a whole bunch of layers. And there is a, a reason this, this card comes up if you're needing to kind of focus on the energy of the Manipura chakra, the solar plexus chakra, and, and deal with that. And so by bringing in those layers, which I think are quite intentional in this deck. Um, the, the more I read the guidebook and the more I get to know the well done uh, Kim Kranz through, through her various writings and blog posts, she knows a lot. <laughs> she, I think she's definitely an underrated writer and her guidebooks could have been expanded um, enormously. And saying that, um, I think she wants readers and querents and you know people that are working with her cards to to read intuitively and to kind of find the focus that is important to them at that time. However, um, the subtle messages in her cards are really, really important and. Um, I would really encourage you to pull out this deck again. I did a whole video, I believe, on this card, on this deck, and I'll link that in the description box below, and that might kind of help you. So here again, we have, well, we have fire again, but we have the eyes here, which are bringing in also the color of green. And for me, this kind of yellow-green represents a transition, um, bringing the Manipura Chakra into some sort of balance and moving towards the energy of the heart chakra. I mean, you don't have to go there, but you can go there. You can also deal with all of the wild cats that represent in the kind of shamanic training that I have done, the direction of the West, where we um, begin to track our shadows and look at death and things like that. There's just the possibility of... Um, different ways to read these cards is, I don't know, I, I'm i surprised. So I had put these cards away for a long time and pulling them out again has been really, really um, important and it's it's revealed some very special things in, um, in doing card combinations with this Oracle deck with other tarot decks. And this symbol Right, so we have some sort of eclipse happening here, which is, you know, it's very much like a tower card, or it's it's definitely an awakening card. So it's going to probably come up with one of the more um, um, revealing tarot cards in a reading, and so you need to pay attention to that. And why why does this elk have? Why are the horns on fire? so many possible questions that you can ask here. And we're not dealing with the fire element. We have this fiery color of the Manipura Chakra, but we are dealing here with the element of earth. 
This is an animal that walks upon the earth um, in North America in the cooler climate. But why are the horns on fire? So these are all really kind of important questions to ask. The other thing about this deck is if you get to know it and you get to know the 14, I believe it's 14, the order of each of the animals, that brings in you know, another layer to this deck. So go back if you have this deck and pull it out and spend some time with it because it's really, um, really worthwhile getting to know. Yeah, I think because there are no keywords on the cards, it is definitely not a beginner's deck. And it is one that you can begin to explore all of these things that I've talked about. Color, chakras, energy, shamanic healing, animal medicine. And of course, you can do that with any animal deck. But I think Kim has built in something really special to this deck that um, is easy to overlook. So for example, here we have the water element where with the octopus, the octopus is in the dark. The crown chakra is all these rainbow colors on it. So pick one, pick one of those things that I've just said and explore it a little bit. Here's another example. So the bee, we have the element of air we have this yellowy color. Why do we have the yellowy color? The bee is abundant in summer. Summer, Manipura Chakra, Solar Plexus. Why do we have this green here? Why do we have the energy of the heart chakra closer to the bee than the yellow of the solar plexus? Sorry, my camera cut out. You may or may not be aware that the bee has a connection to fertility, and that is the medicine of the bee. Fertility would speak to second chakra to orange. There happens to be a little splash of, splash of orange here. I don't know if you can see it or not on the camera. Um, there also is an element of blue here. If you look deeply into the card. So if you give, and look at this, these concentric circles here, this massive amount of energy around the bee. Um, that's going to give you something too. I guess, what, I guess what I want to say is these cards are anything but simple. And it's taken me quite a bit of time to go back and to really appreciate um, the experience of the creator and all that, um, all that she has put into this deck. So yeah. So that is um, my vote for one of the most versatile animal decks. And then I have a pile of decks here that I call self-study decks. Sometimes I have these decks in my Reiki room, um, or I offer them at when I'm doing retreats. But these are very special decks that are, for me, intended to be pulled one card at a time when you have time uh, to process the information on both the card and the guidebook. And this is just the way that I use this particular deck and these types of decks. Um, Alana Fairchild writes amazing guidebooks. So you could kind of take what I'm saying and apply that to any of Alana's decks if you have a different um, a theme that you're particularly attracted to. But this particular oracle is so well done and it feels just like it taps right in to your soul when you first of all um, select a card and then you begin to uh, contemplate the artwork. The art is heartfelt, it is passionate, it is vivid. It can take you to places that you didn't even know you could go. These are beautiful cards to meditate with. It reminds me a little bit of Margaret Peterson. Um, it's a little less abstract than Margaret Peterson, but some of the cards um, definitely remind me of her tarot. It's at that kind of level, you know, if you, if you know what I'm talking about. Now, if you wanted to read these 
intuitively. So to select a card and then move toward meditation with the card, I'm sure that um, these cards would do that for you. But in my experience, most people don't have the um, the patience or the stillness of mind to do that. And that's why I'm recommending this book because it is entirely accessible because of the beautiful um, words that Alana has channeled and written and collated in the book. And we'll look at the book in just a moment. And yes, for sure, this is a deck that would be worthwhile trimming. I just haven't done it. I find the Blue Angel decks very, um, very thick, and it's it's challenging uh, to cut the cards. There's probably about five cards in this deck that I have drawn multiple, multiple times. So even though the descriptions in the guidebook are four five pages long sometimes, I've really kind of taken those messages um, to heart. Yeah, And the artist's name, if I haven't said it already, is Rasuli, I believe. And um, yeah, just incredible, incredible paintings. So let's just, I'm just going to shuffle here and we're going to choose one card and I'm going to kind of, I'm not going to read the whole description in the guidebook because that's going to make the video way too long, but I'm just going to show you kind of the, the highlights of what's available in this guidebook because it is a lovely feature. And you also could have the option to adjust reading um, the poem and then going into um, a trance or a meditation. Yeah. So bring a question, actually I'll do that. Bring a question to mind, close your eyes just for a second. Take a breath in and a breath out. What is it that you need some clarity on? One more breath. The Angel Razbar. So just have a look at the artwork for a moment. See if any of the colors speak to you, if you know anything about this particular angel. Look into the background. Look at the flow of energy. What really stands out for me, for me here is the rainbow of color. The aura of light around the angel. So we go to the guidebook number 27. There is a very small inset of the picture and then there is a poem. A translation of Rumi by Rizzuli. Tell me the truth. I asked love, what are you? I am the everlasting life, love said. I am the recurring joy of living. The master speaks of a den of riches where many precious jewels can be found. In abundance they lie patient and yet ready to be claimed. Go scoop them up, urges the master. The devoted ones look but cannot see. Where are these precious, precious jewels, they cry, for we cannot find them anywhere. The master gazes lovingly at the devoted ones and responds kindly. In service, my beloveds, you shall find the jewels through service. For what is the soul but the finest and most precious of heavenly jewels? What is service but the scooping up of the soul that it does not lie lost nor unclaimed, but instead honored for all its precious worth and beauty? tended to until it becomes vibrant as a flawless ruby, radiant with the joy of living. So you have this beautiful translation. And then after that, Alana has a long oracle message. So this is the quotation here, I believe, are from Razuli. And then Alana's message starts here. 
and then it goes over the page. I will give you a flavor for hers. So 24, 125. And then at the end here, we have sacred honoring rituals. So like I said, there's a, there's a practice for each of the cards. I'm not sure if I said that. But I want to just give you the flavor of Alana's language as well too. I'll just read a short little um, uh, excerpt for, for this card. This oracle comes to you with guidance. You're being guided deeper into your life purpose and divine destiny. Like a maturing adult who is ready to take on the mantle of a greater responsibility, your soul is stepping up. You're going through a process of assuming more spiritual responsibility for the honest and empowered expression of your own essence. And through that, your healing presence in the world is increasing. You are stepping up and forward on your path. This is appropriate now. It will make you more visible, but that is as it should be. It is not about being worth more than another. It is about the utterly sensible use of light that it not be dampened down by a shade, but instead be placed where it can cast its fullness so that others still in darkness may find their way more easily. And that's just a half a paragraph of those many pages that I just showed you. So, so yeah, this is one of the very best self-study, self-inquiring um, meditation decks that I have in my collection. All right, so the next pile of cards is the magical pile. Um, these are some of my favorite cards, and it was really hard to choose one deck. So I've pulled two mass market decks here in this um, category. This is the Messenger Oracle by Raven Fallon, and it's a really beautiful deck. It has such a good array of magical beings and creatures. Um, beautiful messages on each of the cards. I love the color. I love the energy. I love the variety of messages. This is um, a really easy deck to read intuitively. The guidebook messages are very short, so it's not a deck that I would, um, you know, say that you need to use the guidebook at all, like I did in the, you know, in the last one with the Rumi Oracle. And there's a kind of a, a connection, actually, to the deck that I have below here, um, recognizing that um, this could very well be one of the transfigured um, kitsune, um, just by looking at the, the style of the art, the fact that this is in the full moon. There's so much that you can pick up within these pictures. And look at this lovely pink and green dragon energy with the freshness, right? The freshness of the green all behind here. Respect your boundaries. So yeah, so if you need a little bit of help, the guidebook descriptions are short, but this is um, such a beautiful deck. And yeah, I just, yeah, sometimes people just, they lose touch with magic and spirit. And, and that's when I, kind of pull out these decks because it is it's kind of a restorer of of that energy and it just breaks my heart when people lose touch with oh my god look at this card here this is just incredible so here we have so I believe this is a tree and then within the tree, we have all this other energy, right? So we have this gorgeous face here with the third eye wide open. And then we have the wisdom of the turtle and the turtle in spirit. Look at all of the energy around the edge of the turtle. Crazy. I mean, you can just go so many places. And if you choose, you know, use this one. I wish that this deck would be redesigned um so that it could be trimmed but it definitely cannot be trimmed as is i mean i guess you could make it square around around here but it just seems all of this border is is so excessive but you definitely can't just trim the artwork or you would lose i don't know kind of a challenging deck to trim So yeah, so this is one of my picks for magical decks. 
And then the other one I have below here, this, and I will tell you who the artist is too, because I think that's really important. I didn't share that with you. Um, this is the, the guidebook is by um, Lucy Cavendish. And this is kind of the legend of the kitsune um, based on the Japan, Japanese folklore. So the kitsune are these magical beings, the fox. Kitsune is uh, the Japanese word for fox. And the foxes... Um, yeah, are revered as, as magical beings, and they're able to transfigure into um, human, fairy, mermaid um, beings at different times of their lives, depending on how they're, how they're needed. Um, and the legends and the stories are just, just really special. If you're aware of the Pokemon um, series, so here we've got uh, Nine Tails, I believe. So I, I don't know if you you're aware that um, the Pokemon creatures all kind of, not all, but many of them come from actual um, folklore in Japanese culture. Yeah. And the color palette is so beautiful. This is one of these um, decks. It feels that, you know, when you get it, it's super, super sticky, but it's, um, it was, it's well, it's, what I want to say, it's not, they don't stick together anymore. So here's the, the Foxfire card itself. So it's called Foxfire, the Kitsune Oracle. And this guidebook, because I think that Lucy spent so much time researching the energy of it, has, you know, a more, it's a more beefed up guidebook. So for the cards, you have, rather than just a short description, you have a, um, you have a full page for every card. And the beauty of this guidebook, too, is you get this beautiful... Um, kind of grayscale um, drawing of each of the cards or a feature of the cards and it's it's really lovely yeah, so this is um this guidebook I definitely would read it, it enhances um, the accessibility of the deck for sure and the artist for this deck is Meredith Dillman. She is a traditional watercolor painter known for her colorful artworks, which blend the flowing lines of Art Nouveau with fantasy myth and folklore. And she's from the U.S. Yeah. And most of you will know um, Raven's artwork from her tarot deck. Yeah. So this deck, of course, um, pairs very well with her tarot deck. All right. So that's number four, which kind of is of a cheat. And then we're going to go to the very last category. And the fifth and the last category we're looking at is kind of all round Oracle decks, decks that you can use as standalone decks that you can use um, for a quick draw or with any, um, any tarot deck really. And I've spoken about Anna's deck so many times and this is a deck that um, I would probably never take out of my basket. But because I've spoken of this so many times, I'm just going to speak to Lauren Aletta's deck because this is also an equally um, versatile oracle deck. And I think much more so than her tarot deck. This is a very, um, these are really special oracle cards. This is the version that comes with a slightly larger guidebook. I believe now when you order the cards, the guidebook fits into um, into the box. Um, this is very, um, very thick cardstock, overhand shuffling kind of cardstock. The color palette is really beautiful on these cards. And there are, I think I took them out, there are chakra cards that come with this one too. So there's seven more cards than I, that I'm including here. These messages are very deep and I feel that much like I said about the animal spirit cards that there's a lot more to the, these cards than is revealed either um, at first glance or even in the description in the guidebook so these cards really um benefit from taking some time to get to know. They also work really beautifully with a Lenormand reading because there are several cards that 
kind of really um, pair and mirror um, a few of the Lenormand cards. Beautiful, Poppy. You are exactly where you need to be. And, you know, it's really important for me that Oracle decks have um, an equal weight of challenging cards as well as um, inspirational cards. And I think that's where a lot of Oracle decks fall by the wayside is that they're just, you know, too soft, too soft. And sometimes we need to be nudged and pushed and challenged. And it's really important that um, we allow that to happen if we're, you know, really kind of focusing on our growth. Yeah. So yeah, this is one of my favorite um, all-around decks, and I do have some favorite cards. <laughs> I love the, the cup, the card with the teacup, the chai cup, and the card with the book set that we've already gone through. That's another one of my favorites. But yeah, so versatility is really important and also the kind of the depth of the message. And so I would pair these I would either, you could either start as an opening draw, so use the Oracle deck, kind of get a theme for the reading that's going on. And you wouldn't even necessarily have to address the card. You could just place that to the side as, okay, so this is kind of the theme because some of her deck, some of her cards are a little more um, challenging to reflect upon and how that is going to reveal itself if you're going to pull some oracle cards, sorry, tarot cards as well. Like for this one, feeling and form. We have um, a lot of kind of things to uh, to think about and layers that could possibly um, drive the direction you go with a tarot reading. And then pull a few tarot cards and then come back and kind of look at the theme. Or conversely, such a beautiful elephant card, um, and this, of course, could easily, you know, mirror what's going on in the reading. So you could draw it at the end as well, too. But I think it's kind of cool to draw it at the beginning and then allow the tarot cards to um, take you in the direction that you need to go. This is a super cool fear card. Yeah. So yes, I hope that was useful for you. I really wanted to pull some tarot decks from kind of different categories because I could easily have shown you five from one category because I, um, this is a beautiful card, soul knowing. I have um, quite an extensive collection. And if you want to see more of my Oracle cards, please kind of go take your time and go through my pairings video because I've done lots of deck combo videos. And I think that's why... I decided to really kind of expand my collection was that so that I had decks that worked really well with other decks. Yeah. And here we've got, you know, a really playful card. And I think bringing that lightness into a deck is really important as well, too. So thanks for watching. And um, please let me know what you think of these decks and um, maybe what your favorite is in each or just, uh, you know, one of the categories that I, I have mentioned. Stay well. Namaste.